Hey gang, um, welcome back and to this lecture for user defined structures. We are going to talk about data types that you can create out of the primitives. Uh, we'll take a look at the row type, a uh, V array, which behaves very similar to an enumeration or an array in other languages. Uh, we'll take a look at user defined records. Uh, nested records, uh, complex record types, and then we'll culminate with a look at uh, indexed by tables, or as Oracle likes us to refer to them as associative tables, wherein we're basically going to build an array of user-defined records. Very cool stuff. Should be great fun. Um, we're going to move through this stuff pretty quickly because it is part of the fundamental section we want to get to the meat when we start talking about real world examples. So let's jump on the inside and take a look. Lecture 4 script should now be open as should SQL developer so we can start following along. You have a good time. See you on the inside. Okay. The simplest user defined type utilizes the percent row type syntax. In our little example here, we declare a variable named myTeamPlay, which assumes the same structure as a row in the TeamPlays table. We then select a row from that table into the myTeamPlays variable and ultimately print the team's play name back to the output buffer. Very easy, yet very powerful stuff. All right, now let's play that same game, but this time we're going to explicitly define the my team play record type. We begin by defining the team play type record type and then instantiate that type with the variable my team play. Our code now executes just as it had previously and we're off rocking and rolling. Please note this method of defining a local data structure is of course very powerful when you're not mimicking the structure of a single database table, but instead building something more complex. Okay, now we're going to increase the degree of difficulty just a little bit by embedding the our team play type into the our nested team play record type. Now we have a user-defined structure contained within a second user-defined structure. Not surprisingly, PLSQL lets you play this game to any level of complexity. Hey, did you notice how we also had to use the instantiation variables to two levels in order to reference the team play name variable? Got it. Dot notation can be your friend when used properly. All right, enough on user-defined record structures. Let's move on to V-arrays. V-arrays work just like regular arrays in other programming languages. You define the array, instantiate it, and then manage the array contents by the array index value. Our little example here, we're populating the array at the time of instantiation. That is not necessary. Alternatively, we could have just initialized the V-Array as in, in this example and then extended it as we added data to it. I suggest you take a moment to review this example closely as the syntax is a little subtle for the first time you see it. Those of you used to working with enumerations in other languages should recognize the syntax pretty quickly. Declare a type initialize a variable of that type, and then instantiate it as memory is actually allocated to the structure. All right, we're going to culminate this discussion with an array of user-defined records, aka an index by table. Now, Oracle wants us to call these things associative tables. So if you're writing the certification exams, please know that and make certain you use that vocabulary. Hey, me, I'm old as dirt, and I remember when these guys first came on the scene. Trust me, everybody in the real world calls these things index by tables. 
All right, enough. Uh, okay, in our little example here, we first set up a couple of V arrays and then define a local record structure. Next, we create a table of those local record structures and index, index that table via an integer. Net, we just created an array of local record structures when we then put to good use writing out the lines, Rick Phillips is so cool. Well, probably not true. It's certainly not a good example of an index by table, but I'm sure you immediately recognize an array of locally defined records is pretty darn cool and awfully handy when we start writing complex code. Net, we have a place to store local data sets without building another physical table. Now, before we go on, a quick word of caution on index by tables. Please don't use these guys with million record data sets. All this data is stored local memory in the SGA, and as such, huge record sets, uh, huge index by tables can negatively impact performance. A couple of hundred, a couple of thousand records, no problem. Just when we start to get into the tens of thousands or hundred thousands, better start thinking about using a physical table instead. Certainly, if we're up to a million rows, we don't want to be using up that amount of physical memory. All right, see you on the outside. All right, I hope that was educational and you had some fun in there because um, those are the really the structures that we're going to start utilizing when we start looking at real world examples. We're going to have to know this stuff down cold because <laughs> we're going to be looking at real life code. And this this stuff is just part of the basics for getting that done. Uh, so what we learned, we started out with the percent row type declaration, wherein we basically declared a variable or an object similar to a row in a physical table in the schema. Real standard stuff, and uh, we're gonna use it all the time. We then went on to declare our own record type. Now, the nice thing here is you're not always going to have a situation where there's a row in a physical table out there that you can basically just copy. You're going to instead have to create your own record type. Um, easy enough, we did it without any problem. We even went as far as nesting those guys in our next example. That is, building a record type which contained a user-defined record type. and. Uh, don't forget that dot notation we learned as to how to reference the fields within our user-defined record. Real nice stuff. We then moved on to vArrays, which are PLSQL's implementation of a standard array or an enumeration in some languages. Doesn't really matter. Point is, they're a string of like variables indexed by an integer, and you can play nice, nice games with these things. We used them in a couple of different examples, but where we're really going to utilize them down the line is when we create a, an array of user-defined records, i.e. an indexed by table. That is a table that resides only in memory very, very handy and used all the time in PLSQL. Remember, you can go to any degree of complexity on these guys. Oh, and don't forget, uh, if you're taking the certification exam, those things are officially called associative tables, regardless. Everybody in the real world calls them index buys. And uh, don't also abuse those guys. Make certain that when you start getting 10,000, 20,000, or 100,000 rows, you start thinking about utilizing physical table because you'll burn SGA up real quick. Just a couple of words of advice uh, from people with scar tissue on this side of the table. All right, that pretty much puts a wrapper on user-defined record structures. So we'll catch you in our next lecture where we're going to look at flow control, a more real fundamental stuff. And we'll go again through it very quickly. So we'll see you then in the interim. You go out there and you have some good times, but learn something every day. It's what's important.